Okay, welcome to the That's Good Sports slash That's Good Broncos podcast. I'm your stupid host, Brandon Perna, here with moderately less stupid host, Will Keys, coming out of Sacktown, USA. Uh, We are getting close to football season. There's kind of big news happening, but nobody's really interested. I feel like NFL interest is really kind of at a low, and then it's going to ramp up once football actually starts. But Hard Knocks is going strong. We'll talk a little bit uh, about that. We've got some Broncos news to sort of bang through. Um, Some of our bold predictions, uh, which... I'm going to release the Bold Predictions episode for the 2020 season early on Patreon. And then I think I'm going to post it to the YouTube channel because I will be away for a week or so while my wife gives birth to our first child. And I think that would be a good video just to get up on the the old tubes. And uh, some uh, Chiefs. Oh yeah, the Chiefs face paint stuff we can get into a little bit. A lot of like, yeah, like I said, a lot of shit, little shit happening. Little shits happening all a over the A ton of little out. stories. I miss the preseason. I do get yeah, tired yeah. of the preseason always by week four. Week four of the preseason is a tough watch. But at the same time, it's necessary for, for kind of building that momentum leading up to yeah. week one. Well, and it's just going to hit all at once. And I don't know if I'm – if I'm going to be ready for it. Yeah. You're basically like we're, we are uh, the, the chicken in Pulp Fiction where she's like going into cardiac arrest. Like we're just like on the floor waiting Mm -hmm. for football and we need, we need that fucking adrenaline shot to come into our chest. And that's like those first games is going to snap us out of it like that. Pretty good analogy. So we, yeah, we've had football withdrawal for since, um, since the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl, because I stopped paying attention. Um, wow. so we could say happen. week five of XFL ball, you know. That's fair. Yeah, you were really into XFL ball. I had maybe, to. Maybe more than anyone else. On, on earth. earth. On earth. Um, but, no, it's, it's something – it's like a drug, and you need to build tolerance. And we've been going through so much withdrawal that if we go back to our normal levels immediately, it could kill us. <laughs> yeah so we need <laughs> we need to taper up yeah uh, and i'm I'm a little bit worried but um that's the risk we have to take that's what we do for for you guys for, yeah well what, what i've noticed is like okay so the the, the preseason is always kind of annoying right yeah but what obviously football games are nice to have and during the preseason like we would have we would have been able to so far see like Jerry Judy play just a little bit but we would have seen him play in a game and got a little bit of a a taste of what is mm-hmm. being talked about in training camp because like I'm finding without any preseason football games I I just do not give a shit about what's happening at Broncos practice day in and day out like I admire the people covering that stuff and making stories there <laughs> Because, like, I don't care if Jerry Judy's running great routes at non-padded practices until I see him do it against, like, a defensive back covering him in some sort of competitive situation that's not his own teammate. Like, it's not going to really do it for me. And that's, like, what I've noticed is missing without the preseason games. And I think if the NFL goes to just two preseason, preseason games, like, that'll kind of be the sweet spot. Give us just enough to get excited about – but not yeah. too much where we're bored. And just a little taste. Yes. We just we need that we need that sweet, sweet sample to get us hooked for the Right. The right. Season. I agree. Because there's this usually during training camp and especially so this year, because I think the reporters are just like it's like they're sitting on a hill with binoculars and they're not even allowed to like take videos of <laughs> and even like the team puts out videos and they're super zoomed in. Like they're only following the ball because apparently um weirdos from the other teams are like trying to uh look at like their formations and personnel and everything like you're really going to get that much um i don't know maybe 
maybe <laughs> maybe it does like give you something, but <laughs> hard to imagine. But yeah, no, there's this wall between like, okay, these reporters are telling us this, but we never we're like we're not gonna confirm anything fully until we see it with our own two eyes and that doesn't happen until preseason yeah. and now it's just like we don't know what's gonna happen we don't know who's gonna we don't know who's good or not i mean i i'm pretty sure jerry judy's gonna be really good yeah no, but other than that like i i'm no i have no idea don't know like it's the the only news that's happening is just like player injured player injured yeah. player injured team will not have fans at games player injured player falls down at practice gets up appears to be okay yeah, <laughs> those are someone the types tweets of... something. Someone tweets something bad. Yeah, uh, Joe Judge that's... is going to uh, start um, making his players practice blindfolded, and yeah. all of them are going to try to tackle Daniel Jones. <laughs> Joe, Judge, Joe Judge puts a hit out on his quarterback. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the preseason. I think we've we've officially confirmed that it is a necessary I wouldn't call it a necessary evil maybe just for the players but I like it enough yeah for yeah I think cutting it in half is perfect two games is right and you know where we we've really missed the preseason too is with hard knocks yeah because the preseason factoring in as like a natural finale to every episode of hard knocks it it like it really can't be understated because there's no like climax to these episodes we can't tell if these guys are, are doing well or not there's not like his chance to prove themselves. And I know that the Rams had, had this scrimmage at SoFi Stadium at the end of the last episode, but it's thrown off the rhythm and um, the formula for the show so much that it's, it's not the same. and It's not hitting the same. And it was like last week was okay. I thought week two was fine. Week one was pretty tedious just getting into, okay, here's, you know, all <laughs> we're going to go one through 90, each player being tested. Uh, two was okay, and then three was like – I watched it this morning. It was almost hard to sit through. It was boring. Like, I, I got 20 I, more minutes of this. I basically judge a, a show now uh, on how many times I look at my phone when I'm watching yeah. it. So if I don't check my fucking phone through an entire episode, that's – like that's, as, that's equivalent of two thumbs up, five stars, whatever the rating system is. One or two times, pretty average, but that hard knocks <laughs> – I would say I was looking at my phone and doing other shit for maybe half the episode, at least. Right. Uh, it, it's and like, it's on HBO. It'd be like if, uh, you know, they, they told The Sopranos one season, you guys are going to have to figure out how to do this season without any reference to the mafia. So Pretty much. <laughs> like, yeah, no, this actually, yeah, this season, Tony's actually working in the sanitation business. Yeah. <laughs> how fun. No, no murder, no crime. Fun. It's just you got to make a one-hour drama, uh, no. thirteen times a season about um, garbage. I would make my, I would put my money on James Gandolfini um, making the life of a sanitation worker very intriguing. I honestly, I think they might be able to do it for a season. Yeah, but Man, the, Spr- the, the, not. the Sopranos was just really good. That's uh, our conclusion for Hard Knocks is. How about those Sopranos, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right. No, Hard Knocks um, 2020 has turned into season two of True Detective. That's yeah. where it's at. Fair enough. Me. What do you think it's of – like, I want it to be good, and it's, it's not. No, and it's – You can tell. Like, we got – we, and that's saying something because Hard Knocks featured, you know, Chris Harris in this last episode, who, because a Broncos fan, you're really interested to see – like how he, what he's thinking about and doing in Los Angeles. And as much as we hate to see him as a charger, I think everybody's rooting for him. You know what I mean? But there's just not a lot. I'm, root, I'm rooting for him to cover Jerry Judy this season. Yeah. So no, I'm rooting for him to play horribly Chris against Harris. the Broncos. And uh, yeah, give up some, some massive t- – I, I want him to – because he always played well against Keenan Allen – now he just needs mm-hmm. to play horribly against Jerry Judy as a Charger to really make that 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 story complete, right? They were also on this last episode. They're treating Keenan Allen like he was like Jerry Rice. Yeah, I it like Keenan Allen's pretty good, but he's just kind of like a 
he's kind of like a catch monger. Like he's a, he's like if Michael Thomas like had less volume and wasn't quite as explosive. Yeah. He's he's like, Mike Williams is arguably a better receiver just because he's more explosive and he's hurt now. So yeah, as usual. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Keenan Allen overrated wide receiver. He's like a, like, Keenan Allen is the equivalent of a comedian's comedian. You know what I mean? Where uh, right. like other yeah. players really respect his game, but <laughs> he's not necessarily a game changer for his team. It's like, oh yeah, he's a he's a, tact- a tactician. He runs great routes. He blocks. Like he gets a lot of respect from other players, but he's never that guy where you're like, oh man, that team can't live without him type of player. He's not like Julio Jones out there or even like Tyreek Hill – where when they're not in the game, you notice a huge like difference in how the offense functions. Yeah, I, if you if you switched out Keenan Allen for someone else, like we wouldn't know, like the the casual fan wouldn't notice. Yeah, you could. I don't think you could replace him with River Craycraft. With River Craycraft, yeah, you just no, signed with the Forty ers I think. I, I think you are right. Forty ers <laughs> Something about 49ers and, and Rivers, I don't know, and gold. That works. We'll figure they, it they out. Struck gold. They struck gold at the river. Uh, Something – they needed more wide receivers. So I'm, I'm <laughs> yes, glad. they did. <laughs> uh, uh, but, yeah, this, this has been a bad season. I think we can all agree. Um, I guess we'll watch the last two because there's not much else off on. But it missed Phil. It missed Philip Rivers, Justin yeah, Herbert. Yeah. I don't think was, he had a line in the last episode. It was the wrong year to get rid of Phillip Rivers. It was. <laughs> he would have been so good for this season. Like, they they need him there for entertainment purposes. Uh, and just one day inside of the Rivers' house. Like, that's all I want to see. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> Chaos. How do you keep a mask on all those kids? Where are they yeah. going to school? It's just, yeah, like, it shows Phillip Rivers' wife – homeschooling all 11 at once yeah even though i'm pretty sure one's like in college but uh, <laughs> um yeah i mean a little bit of philip rivers disease has rubbed off on the rams rookie linebacker uh clay johnston who just yeah. says like freaking and fudge 10 times a, a play um interesting little cameo from from brett Favre, but brett Favre that's the in. thing is like we we didn't see like how he performs in the preseason game, the scrimmages are okay, but like you can't even really fully hit. Just doesn't doesn't work for me. Um, yeah, I'm I'm moving on on this season. I think I, I might watch the last two, but I'll be I'll be checked out. I'm not. I don't have any expectations. Yeah, that. Uh, what's that guy's name again? The linebacker, Clay Johnston. Clay Johnston. Uh, he he drives my wife nuts. <laughs> Why's that? I don't know. She's like that was just like the first person. She's like. I guess too annoying. I don't, something's not right with him. He's too annoying. <laughs> I, I can, I can see it. Yeah. I, I don't I know. Could, like, uh, I get it. He loves football. I think he's probably falls on the more likable side, but it's just like one of those things, like everybody's got a different opinion when they're like watching that stuff. Uh, I think HBO should start bleeping out his fake cuss words. Oh, see, that would be good. I mean, that's something we could do. I yeah. Don't know if it's worth it. I think I just think it'd be funny because HBO, you can pretty much say anything. But the guy who's like actually avoiding saying bad words on premium cable, he's the one that get, gets bleeped out. Yeah. None of that. <laughs> none of that. None of that network FCC shit on our yeah. on our airwaves. No. Nope. Yeah, I can't imagine being an NFL player and not swearing you know yeah like it, imagine it, like it's, hearing bill o'brien all practice and, and yeah just have, not having that rub off on you it's an environment ripe for fuck bombs like all like mm-hmm. even the the chargers coach the going off on the tight ends for not blocking like every other word out of his mouth was fuck yeah. so like if you're an adult man and you're you know i'm not saying there's anything wrong with it i'm just saying i don't get it I don't get having that kind of discipline for your vocabulary in a situation where you're given every pass to say, to say the F word. Yeah. Uh, Clay Johnston, Philip Rivers, Kirk Cousins, 
Andrew Luck. I'm assuming Andy Dalton doesn't swear on the field. And maybe Russell Wilson, too. Russell Wilson, I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm trying – any other quarterbacks that would qualify? No. Maybe maybe a Roethlisberger now. <laughs> oh, now that he's born again. Now he's born again, he won't swear. Yeah. You know who is going to swear this year? Chiefs fans because <laughs> they're going to be pissed off. Uh, so we found out that the Chiefs internally as a team have banned wearing face paint uh, Native American face paint and headdresses at their games. And they're also looking into uh, they're doing a thorough review of the Tomahawk shop, which I don't know how much investigating you have to do. I think it's pretty, pretty straightforward. Either you keep it or you don't. Clearly they're just like, Oh, let's, can we please keep this? It's like a, it's like a home field advantage type of thing. But um, with this like cathartic, Casual racism um, being cut out of their lives will will that simply be replaced by them screaming the n word? <laughs> I think that's where this goes. I don't know. Uh, I'm more interested in what a thorough review really entails. Is that like a company poll you do on Zoom? Are you uh, yeah. interviewing and asking actual Native Americans about their thoughts on? They're going to find out, like, who invent- actually invented the tomahawk. It's like, well, it was actually a white guy from England in uh, 1157. So, you know what? We got this one. You know, like, uh, I'm honestly – I support – any tradition that Kansas City Chiefs fans hold dearly being stripped away from them at this point. I right with you. It felt yeah. weird too. Like just remember uh, the Super Bowl weekend where, <laughs> and like you feel like you know this stuff's been obviously you know it's always been a thing, but it's been bubbling like the last few years and finally coming to a head this year. But like back in Super Bowl weekend all the Chiefs fans, like, together, like, doing the tomahawk chop to, for the Fox cameras. You're like, this this isn't going to last much longer, is it? No. Uh, it, They're tomahawk chopping, like, a team full of uh, wife beaters. And <laughs> it's like something, something doesn't uh, pass the 2020 test here. I don't know. Yeah, it's going to, you know, things are changing. Like things are changing. Um, what if this like really took a took a toll on the Chiefs as a successful football team? What if that was? What if this is the key? Like, what if that racism unlocked their powers as an offense, and now they're <laughs> back to league average? Well, I guess like that would be like a double a doubly good reason to. And stop doing something that was considered racist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like beyond well, just like that. They've got fans in the stands this year. Yeah, they're gonna have what, like fourteen thousand people at a, at their games or something like something that. Something like that. Sixteen. Yeah, I, I think sixteen thousand. It'll be Which interesting. They already had them in for a scrimmage. <clears throat> oh, and immediately, uh, they like everyone took their masks off. <laughs> Oh, right at their uh, – Yeah, at their team uh, scrimmage. Team scrimmage. So, I don't know. I, where do you land on that? Do you think fans should be – like a, a small percentage of fans should be allowed? I don't, I don't care. I just don't really give a shit anymore. Like, at this point, I'm about a week away – from having that baby come into my life. Okay, you can't pull. You can't pull the "I don't care" because I'm a father move. Yes, now. I can. That's the only no, reason you become a father. Not until no, 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 no. no. Yes, not well, until it happens. Not yes. until it happens. Like <laughs> you have to the care. The hospital's gonna be clear for me. Uh, no hiccups. If I need to get the baby to the doctor, we can, and uh, that's all I care about at this point. <laughs> Like, I yeah. guess the way I see it is it doesn't seem practical to try to even figure out how to get fans into your stadium. But a stadium is big enough where 
if the fans comply with wearing a fucking mask, you got enough space to keep them separated far enough apart from each other where they shouldn't be, you know, spreading spreading the virus to each other. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's the, if like it's outdoors, it, it's not a huge risk. I don't think it's not more. Right. I, I don't know. I don't think it, it you know, it doesn't, um, it's not more risky than going to certainly like going to the grocery store. Yeah, like, that's obviously essential, but. When I go to the uh, grocery store and it's busy, I'm like, Ugh. like, I don't want to be here right now. I think I'd feel more comfortable sitting, you know, 40 or 50 feet away from people in an open stadium. Yeah. Uh, just like going to the park, you know, going to the park and having a picnic essentially yeah. is what I'd compare it to. But it like, it, it, when I say I don't give a shit, like I, it's just like every day it's just the ne- the next team is saying they are or aren't going to, they're not, you know, 14,000 fans. I don't think it's going to make a big difference in terms of like a competitive advantage. Like some teams no. are pitching about that, right? Like, the Bills are Sean saying it's not fair if the yeah. Dolphins have have fans in this. It's fourteen thousand people. Could is... the Dolphins even draw like fourteen thousand still? <laughs> no, it's know. not going to be that loud. And if teams can pump in crowd noise, like it looks like they're going to be able to do, just if you're looking, I don't think it helps your team at all. Maybe like morality a little bit if players are like look at all these. Guys, I that think, came out I think to root so. for us. Let's get the big win for the fans, guys. Like that kind of motivation lasts for what five minutes, and then somebody hits you in the fucking face on a slant route, and you don't you don't care anymore about performing for fans. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think like motivate. If you're in the NFL, you shouldn't have a problem with motivation. No, um, the PEDs you take should be enough. Yeah, the motivation pills um, that you've injected in your anus before every game should do the trick. Um, if that's how you I inject them. Something to be said for like feeding off of the energy of fans, which like even a little bit I think is is something. Here's a thought, real quick. Okay. Okay. What if the NFL made like a performance enhancing drug legal, but the only way you could receive it was with a shot a big shot and it is delivered into your your starfish your mm-hmm. your rectum is as a player is it worth it it depends how competitive they are i feel like ray lewis would like oh i just got a phantom pain thinking together. about it <laughs> <laughs> just feel a little pinch yeah i did yikes I say so that's a no. So that's a no from you. You wouldn't do it. That's a no for me for sure. Yeah. Um, no, I feel like Sean Merriman would. He'd have no problem. I think he'd like. He'd say like, "Thank you." Can I have another? Ray Lewis, yes. But I think the average player, who's just kind of kind of chilled, and like okay, um, you know, running without a, a competitive advantage, not a competitive asshole. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't think I. Could I think do they'd it. say stay away from. From that region, a a shot going into your butt hole. Yeah, not into the hole, but into the side, the most sensitive part it's of issue. your body, really. <sighs> yeah, no, I can't. I can't imagine it. I'm glad this is where I took this podcast. <laughs> but I think if you do accept it and you do sit through the pain of that, I think you deserve the advantage that you get. Probably, if you can sit through that sort of pain, you're probably a pretty good you're, football you're player. You're tougher, tougher than anyone else on that in yeah, the NFL. For sure. Immediately. For sure. Um, we've had a lot of in, uh, injuries. That's what I was looking for. Injuries? Why? Yeah. So, we got on the Broncos, at least, we got Justin Strenad. He's going to miss the season with a wrist injury. Uh, as a linebacker, you really need your wrist. Can't you just can't you just tape it up? Maybe yeah. Put a boxing glove on it. I don't know. Put a tennis ball in there. Yeah. Seems unnecessary. Well, and um, like he, it's okay. So that's interesting because Todd Davis tweaked his calf muscle, right? Yeah. So he should be ready to go week one, but 
you may be limited cast. or, you know, it just kind of depends. And yeah, Strunad, Teresa and Corey Nelson. Strunad was kind of deep on the depth chart anyway. He's a what, – what round did they take him in? Do you remember? It was like fifth or sixth. Okay. So it's like a guy you were going to kind of work – and hope that he could become sort of an inside linebacker. He, yeah, he was having a good camp apparently, but you know, <clears throat> yeah, who knows also. It's just again, camp. Again, who knows? Josie Jewell has proven to be, I don't know, probably a little bit too slow to be the guy you want out there every down. So, yeah, the Broncos' middle linebacker or inside linebacker spot is hurting, ailing. Mm. Uh, Hamler, K.J. Hamler. Might be a while before we actually see what he can do because he's got a hamstring injury, which if you're a speed guy, that's usually a big problem. Yep. The Hamler string. And uh, – O.J. Moody. Yes, the other – there's a lot of rookies getting hurt, really. Pretty much all the rookies, except for, you know, knock on wood, the first pick. Jerry. The one we must protect at all costs. Um, uh, yeah, no, so it's, I think a lot of it has to do with just the weird schedule of the off season, maybe probably. like all the, you know, you always get like players injured at camp or like, you know, activities, off season activities, and it's just all being compressed into this time frame, which is unfortunate. Um, but I, I think everyone's on schedule. The amazing thing is, and I'm almost hesitant to say it. But everyone's getting injured except for Jake Butt. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jake Butt took the butthole injection. <laughs> yeah, don't curse him. You think I, the I think Broncos after are that many knee injuries? He can withstand any type of pain. Are the Broncos going to roll with four tight ends? Well, Austin Fort got hurt, so I think he's out. But they, so you keep Fant, um, Okawebanam, nailed it. Yeah, uh, Jake Butt. And, and Nick Van Bennett? Third. And then maybe Beck. But Beck's kind of like a hybrid. Yeah, didn't they play him at fullback a little bit last year? Played a little fullback. I don't – yeah. So, I don't I don't know what you call him. But there might be a spot for him because of that. He's probably yeah. good on – I'm imagining he's good on special teams also. But Jake Butt, I think if he's healthy, like he's kind of a lock. He's been playing really well. Yeah. And he could – like really actually make a difference. Which think, like the few games that he was healthy in twenty eighteen, like he was he was good. He was out there and he was catching passes. Yeah, I mean if, if he and Noah Fant are on the field at the same time, you feel like that's kind of a dynamic set or yeah. if uh he and uh Albert O are on the field at the same time, seems dynamic. Or you go with him and Nick Vanette, you have the option of two guys who can just sort of block and pose a threat, you know, maybe on in the short passing game there. It just feels like you could disguise and do a lot of different things if you have that sort of luxury at tight end, which the Broncos have not had for quite some time. Right. I was going to say, like, two seasons ago, we had to roll, like, Matt Lacoste out there yeah. as our number one option, and now there's too many tight ends to make the roster. Yeah. Everyone's it's a, good. It's a, that's, a, that's a good problem to have. Um, Agreed. Good problem to have. What else? Um, I oh, didn't yeah. see the D-back tweet that you. Oh that yeah. <laughs> What's that? I didn't see the D-back tweet that you referenced. Well, yeah, I guess he like he had to do an apology, and he hasn't been on the radio for the last few days. But lo- local radio guy Darren McKee accidentally tweeted the N-word when he was tweeting about the Nuggets, just like uh, the Hornets guy, what was his name? John Fokey? John Fokey, yeah. Yeah. John Fokey did about a week before also mm-hmm. tweeting about the Nuggets. And they should exonerate him right here, shouldn't it? You would think like two respected radio guy, like, and I say respected, I don't mean like fans who hate their hot takes or whatever. I mean, no, they've like, been working in the industry for a long time, have had a great record, um, have never said anything like racially no. controversial. I'm, like, it's clearly an accident. And 
looking at the tweet right now. <laughs> it, it's happened. It's happened twice in one week, and You're right. Suddenly, there's like all these, there's all these like phone detectives out there saying like, uh, well, if your phone auto corrects the N word, it means you use it on your phone. And yeah. it's, no, nobody no, says no. it like auto corrected to that. Uh, nuggets in the N word have a handful of similar letters. Mm-hmm. And the ones that aren't the same are right next to each other. So like, you're right right they have just looking at it right now uh they have one two three four five five out of the seven letters in common yeah and then the other two are right next the i and the u are right next to each other and the uh r and the t yeah so and if you're like it's also like if your fingers off like by one letter it's Mm -hmm. off in those two spaces so the real like the real problem we gotta here take is a look that, at I think D Max gotta show us his like his fingers and thumbs. And if they're sufficiently and stuffy if sufficiently fat enough, then <laughs> just close the book. Case yeah. closed. I think that's like <laughs> this is like the weird side effect of everyone being sort of overly aware of racial insensitivity mm-hmm. or racist shit like if somebody makes an honest mistake a lot of people aren't going to believe it right. like that's all it's coming down to and they're going to try to use that opportunity to shit on them and yeah like, and like these guys are forced to do apologies or at least folky was where it's like like i'm i'm sorry for like the the trust that i've broken and for everyone that um for the pain this tweet has caused it's like it's like i know he has to say that but it was just like it's just a typo yeah and it's it it really is the worst word you can have a typo for there's no other word yeah that's worse than having a typo for that and the real like the real problem is that you have two professionals in this industry who didn't proofread their tweet before sending that that's the only thing you can be like well you got to do that it's like you have to Hey, this is part of how you make a living. You have to not send that out. You have to catch that. Like, and that's like an issue with their employer. And I understand like if they want, people want to be upset about that. And the only like defense I'll give there is like when I'm tweeting during a live sporting event, like when I'm tweeting, I tweet the wrong words so many times Mm -hmm. where I read through my tweet again, but like, once your brain locks in what you want to say, sometimes it doesn't see the wrong thing. Now, I would like right. to, I would hope that if I <laughs> typed that, my brain would catch it and say, you know what I mean? But like, uh, what's happened before? Yeah. And I talked about that in a video. Like, I was, I did that on Facebook years ago. I, I hit the N instead of the B when I was saying who is going, which, Broncos tight in is going to have a bigger year. And I typed, I hit the in and I sent it and didn't even see it. Okay. And, that's even close to, closer. To, and because the B, looking at my keyboard right now, the B and the N are also right next to right each other. Right next to each other. It wasn't an auto thing that happened because I'd been hounding away on my computer with that word or some bullshit. It was luckily like not many people followed my Facebook page at that time. And the people who did see it, Knew it was a mistake. It was just clearly a mistake. And they just made fun of me. Like, Mm. and then I deleted it. And it it was like, the the really shitty part is like, one tight end was white and one tight end was black. (laughs) And I was just like, oh, fuck me. But like... Yeah, no, it'd be different if it was like Jake Butt, Nick Vanette, Austin Fort, Matt Lacoste, (laughs) Andrew Beck out there. That would be really confusing. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, well, none of them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's but, like I feel bad for both D Mac and uh, right that like because I've met like I know D Mac a little bit like he's a really mm-hmm. nice guy, um, like he's super involved like his kids baseball teams like he's I don't know man it just seems like a bad thing to happen to a nice guy and he's gonna 
I don't know if he's going to get fired or if they're just going to keep him off the air for a little bit as a punishment. No, so, no one should get fired. No one should get fired. Like if you have to they play, they should get fired if they game. tweet it and they meant to say that word. Like yeah, like this is not the Tom Bredeman situation. No, in no way is it like parallel whatsoever. It just happened like around the same time. It's all Tom Bredeman was on a hot mic. It's like, all right, well, if you just got caught on a hot mic this time, like, you probably are actually, like, saying that quite a bit. Like, what? You know. Well, even if, I feel like if you're in the broadcast booth, you have to assume at all times that whatever you say could end up on, on live TV. Yeah. No, it's uh, – I don't know. You should probably just be smart enough to not say shit like that at work. And hopefully you've gotten to a point where you're not really saying that shit at all, I guess. I don't know. It's like, I guess I try to think about screaming into a pillow before you go to bed. Yeah. If you got, if you need to. Yeah. You really got to get it out. And I think that's the time. I don't think you, I think whatever you scream into your pillow is international waters and, uh, and you're safe. But how long, my question is, how long until we have to call them the Denver basketball team? Because <laughs> too many people have typos with yeah. their – They're going to be forced to change their name, I think. Good God. Into the, the Denver Red Wolves. I just, like – I just pray that I never make that fucking gaffe. Luckily, nobody can fire yeah. me at this yeah. point. It's a thing. But YouTube demonetizes you, like – uh, PewDiePie or whatever, right? That's the only uh, that's the only recourse I, I see. Um, but you have YouTube, and we have another platform with uh, we mentioned it earlier, but the Bold Predictions episode. It's going to be on Patreon. Yeah, um, drop on Patreon early. Will and I are giving our bold predictions for the 2020 football season. Uh, Will, you wanted to tease them a little bit with what you what you got there? Yeah, so this isn't all of the predictions, but it's a couple of them. Uh, so you get an idea of what you're looking at, the, the bold, bold predictions we're making here. Uh, so I would encourage you to, if you have Patreon, make sure you go see it and consider signing up if you, if you want this kind of content. But uh, one bold prediction is Jerry Judy. We talked about him, but he's going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Over guys like Joe Burrow, C.D. Lamb, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor with the Colts, it's him. Uh, he is going to – I think it's going to be pretty comfortable too. He's murdering guys in camp from everything we've heard. And we've seen a few clips too. And I don't know. Like I, I'm going to take a victory lap when this happens too because I'm calling it now. I already called him the best receiver in the draft back when we were on that. Um. It's just logical. It's logical. It's not going to be a surprise. It will be a surprise to to a lot of other people, um, but not to us. No. So that's how. What do you think about that? Will 100% was on it first. Or just ninety nine. I think he has like, I think he has a good chance. I think it's going to be hard for somebody to get that vote over Joe Burrow if Burrow has like a good year at quarterback. Um, I think really what what is going to determine Jerry Judy's success though is Drew Locke. So Judy's more dependent on Locke having a progressive sophomore season at quarterback. Uh, And I think that's going to happen. Like I think Drew Locke's going to be good and get better, but I feel like if you're a running back or a quarterback, more of that is in your control as a rookie. Yeah. Receivers a little, a little tougher. You got to be on a good offense or, a good, you know, you have a good quarterback getting you the, the ball. Who was who's the last wide receiver to win off or to win? Yeah, offensive rookie of the year. I think it was Odell Beckham. Okay, I gotta double check. Although I think you could have made a case that AJ Brown was the rookie of the year last year. Yeah, he was right up there. Um, if, and he because he performed kind of he performed with Mariota and with Tannehill. But they gave it to Kyler Murray, even though he was on, you know, not a terrible team, but 
a team that didn't give him a ton of help and that wasn't yeah. necessarily. I think super Kyler Murray is going to look a lot better this year too. Yeah, he's been a guy that I've kind of come around on. Um, yeah, I'd, I didn't know what to make of Kyler Murray coming out of the draft. Um, but he's a good example of a guy who has a head coach who's going to coach his offense to Kyler's strengths too. You know what I mean? And I think right. he can do a lot with, with Murray, but they went out and got him, you know, DeAndre Hopkins. Um, hopefully they're – the running game will be a little more consistent or whatever, but he should. Yeah, he got should rid improve. of David Johnson. What's that? Got rid got of, of David, David Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> should help. Yeah, uh, so it was Kyler kind of last year, running back before then, two running backs before then, Saquon and Alvin Kamara. Then it was Dak, Todd Gurley, and then back in 2014, Odell Beckham Jr. is the last wide receiver. Um, then you have Percy Harvin in there back in 2009. He's like a wide receiver hybrid kind of guy. Anquan Bolton, Randy Moss won it. Carl Pickens won it back in 1992. But it's mostly just quarterbacks running backs. Yeah. What, like, we got to switch it up here just to keep things fresh. Like, you should have given – maybe Quentin Nelson should have gotten rookie of the year in, in 2018. A lot – an offensive line will never win. Give it to a tight end. <laughs> tight end would be tough. I don't know. Didn't, like, Rob Gronkowski have, like, 10 touchdowns his rookie year? Something yeah. like that? That would have been easy. Instead, they gave it to Sam Bradford, which, look how that aged. Not very well. Not well at all. Uh, I know we've talked about this basically every podcast, uh, but do you think John Elway is regretting not signing Justin Simmons to an extension even more now? Yes, <laughs> After- because – a player who is not as good as Justin Simmons just got the biggest safety contract in NFL history. Yeah, Buda Baker, who was on our underrated players list, <laughs> yeah, which is hilarious now because he's the highest played, paid player at his position yeah. ever. Well, I think it's uh, I think we did all right there because not a lot of people talk about Buda Baker outside and of so- maybe you know diehard Cardinals fans. And yeah, now that he gets paid, people know him more. Right. Yeah. Um, I wasn't really like – he's not like a name that comes up very often. So he doesn't get like a lot of picks. Um, he has zero he picks. An interception line. Yeah, I don't think he's ever gotten one. But he's kind of a – I don't know what he does. <laughs> he's he's like a a line, he plays like a linebacker. He has 140-plus tackles or whatever. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, that's not like the position though that's generally valued. That's why the Jets got rid of Jamal Adams. It's because like you don't want to pay a guy who's like he's great at what he does, but a box safety is not like as valuable as a as a deep cover safety. Yeah, that's like Justin Simmons. He's good like <clears throat> when he plays near the line of scrimmage, but he's also you know, he's patrolling uh, the deep quarter and he's yeah, able he- to like play zone and jump routes and get picks. You would put him like as maybe next to like Kevin Byard is like the best coverage safety right. out there right now. I'm trying to think. There's probably some other guy I'm forgetting. Probably one of the, the, the guys in Minnesota are really good in coverage. Harrison Smith or Smith. Harrison, Harris, 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 and Harrison Don Smith. Smith. Damn it. But yeah, like Simmons is really good in coverage and like that's, in today's defense, like you really, if you have your your safety, you can cover like a corner. Uh, you want that, and you want to pay that. Unless he's Earl Thomas. Yeah. <laughs> then you don't. The wild, wacky world of Earl Thomas. <laughs> I really hope they're just not using Earl Thomas, signing Earl Thomas as leverage against Justin Simmons. That would be my nightmare. Oh. And let's hope I didn't give anybody any ideas there, but you didn't. I think what I've learned is Earl Thomas must be like a really difficult uh, player to work with as a coach. Yeah. Yeah. If the Ravens cut you. Flipped off his own sideline in Seattle. He was going up to like after the Seahawks played the Cowboys, he was like openly saying like, come get me to the Cowboys as they're leaving the field. Um, and yeah, now he's like 
getting in the fights with his own players and not an isolated incident, being a general dickhead in the locker room, not showing up to meetings because he was getting his car washed. His car washed, yeah. Right. Sorry, coach, you awesome. had to get the car washed today. What? That's the thing. Is like that, It's one of those situations where you at least have to have the respect to make up an excuse that yeah. is viable. My right? flat tire, if you're going to use a car ex- excuse. Uh, my wife tried to shoot me again. Uh, wife tried to, yeah, wife tried to shoot me. That It's a good reason not to <laughs> show up on time for oh, me, man. But making the decision to wash your car, uh, you know, something that could – you could just do it after. Doesn't yeah, doesn't yeah. quite doesn't quite work. That's well, this is a life lesson where you need to lie. Yeah, it's, it's just tell the truth. You can, but it's not always an option. You live in Baltimore. I'm sure it rains there a good amount. So just wait for a rain. Yeah, a good August rain. Mm-hmm. Sure, could use one of those here in Colorado and in California, huh, Will? A little bit, a little bit. Fucking state's burning down. Well, we I got lightning we... strikes, but no rain. Yeah, so. but the worst. Lightning without the rain. Why don't you make a song about that, fucking Imagine Dragons? Yeah. Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> lightning never ha- I don't want to pay for that song. <laughs> they uh, know. Oh, yeah, you think the Browns are going to make the playoffs? Oh, yeah, that's my second bold prediction. This one, I'm going to admit, I don't feel as confident about as the first one. But I they're, think – They're poised to make like, – They've got the talent there. And if you're assuming Kevin Stefanski is going to be a better head coach and install an offensive scheme that actually fits what Baker Mayfield does well, then, yeah, they should be able to – especially with an extra playoff spot. Like, they should be able right. to sneak in, theoretically. Yeah, and I – so immediately after I said this, their rookie safety Grant Delpit tore his Achilles. Yeah. They're hurting on, on defense right now. They could use Earl Thomas um, or Logan Ryan. Why is Lo- How come nobody signed Logan Ryan yet? Is it is it because he wants too much money at this point? Yeah, is he really not really budging fluctuate on, on that? Because he was asking for like one year, $10 million. And it feels like someone could have signed him. Just based on how many players have opted out, dude. One million, ten million dollars. One year, ten million dollars for a guy who says he's good. He'd rather play safety because that's what he sees himself and what he mostly plays anyway. Uh, they, Earl Thomas was going to get twelve million for one year to play for Kansas City last year, so that seems like a deal. And you're probably getting somebody who is better in coverage. So maybe I don't know. Yeah, somebody's got to take him. I don't know. Anyway, just a thought. Who knows? I mean, uh, he could just be waiting for like week one or two yeah. for someone to get hurt. I don't know. It seems a little odd, though. I would like him on my team, but then again, what do I know? I don't even know if they have the money. Yeah. We're not the Kansas City Chiefs. We don't I don't look at the money. Cap. After what the Chiefs did, I don't look at anybody's cap space anymore. It's irrelevant. Yeah. It's, if somebody wants a guy, out. they're going to get him. It, they've been – the Chiefs, I'll give them credit. They're the first team to figure out that we're all just playing with Monopoly money. Yep. They have actually mm-hmm. given me hope we can sign any player for any amount of money whenever we want. And not have it hamstring our financials. Nope. It's not real. All right, guys. Thanks for listening on the Rebamp That's Good Broncos channel. I'll have more on that later. We're back. We are back, baby. Even though we never left, we just tried to add some other shit, but it didn't it didn't work out, but we are Re, back. Rebranded. We are back, baby. Back.